I'll discuss case series on skull based lesions, but before we jump into the skull based pathology, we should first understand the anatomy, various fissures, foramina, and neurovascular structures that are associated. CT and MRI are the imaging modality of choice and they help not just in narrowing down the differential but also in pre operative localization and its relationship with the adjacent neurovascular structures. So, uh, we need to know that in MRI, we should take even non fat set sequence as extra cranial fat are better appreciated, which are located in the orbital apex, pterygopalate, and posa, and area medial to pterygoid muscle, which get obliterated in infection, inflammation, and tumor pathologies. So the skull base is divided into an anterior, middle and posterior cranial fossa. This is an arbitrary division, not a rigid. However, for ease of understanding, the anterior skull base is uh, bounded anteriorly by the frontal bone, posteriorly by the lesser wing of sphenoid. Middle cranial fossa is majority formed by the uh, sphenoid bone, anteriorly bounded by the tuberculum cella, anterior cranial process, posteriorly by the petrous bone and dorsum cella, and posterior cranial fossa bounded anteriorly by the clivus bone and posteriorly by the mastoid part of temporal bone and squamous occipital bone. So, anterior cranial fossa we can see on sagittal and coronal sequence uh, uh, section of the CT uh, where we can see the cribriform plate and the crista galli and olfactory nerve which will be better appreciated in MRI. Then we have axial section showing the optic canal in red uh, and superior ophthalmic fissure in blue. Optic canal giving passage to ophthalmic artery and optic nerve. Superior ophthalmic fissure giving passage to third, fourth, V1 division and sixth cranial nerve. On axial section again on CT we can see foramen oval in blue and spinosome in red. Oval giving passage to mandibular nerve, accessory meningeal artery, lesser petrosolum and emissary vein and foramen spinosome giving passage to middle meningeal artery. This is the coronal section showing the spinoid sinus and pterygoid plates and then we have two openings. Laterally we have foramen retinum on red giving passage to mandibular nerve and inframedially we have median canal for the passage of median nerve and artery. In the axial section we can see median canal connected with the middle cranial fossa via foramen laserum. Then we have inferior ophthalmic fissure uh, which gives passage to inferior ophthalmic vein and nerve and then on coronal section we have foramen oval, on the axial section we have foramen rotundum and finally we have coronal section showing optic canal with optic strut separating it from superior ophthalmic fissure. Then we have posterior cranial fossa where we can see the internal auditory uh, canal giving passage to 7th 8th cranial nerve along with uh, labyrinth side artery. Then we have foramen magnum, lateral to it is the hypoglossal canal for the passage of 12th cranial nerve. Then we have carotid canal and medial to it is the jugular foramen for the passage of uh, 9th cranial nerve through pars nervosa and um, uh, internal jugular vein, uh, 10th and 11th cranial nerve through pars vascularis. These are the parts of jugular foramen only separated just by fibrous septa. Now this is the cyst sequence of MRI. We can see olfactory nerve and olfactory groove, optic nerve, then we have a third cranial nerve, oculomotor at the level of midbrain, then we have thick cranial nerve at the level of pons which is trigeminal nerve and then we have vestibular uh, cochlear nerve and facial nerve uh, at the level of cerebellar pontine angle passing through the internal auditory canal. So this was a case of 23 year old woman presenting with nasal discharge with episodes of seizure meningitis and MRI revealing a large defect in the cribriform plate uh, with herniation of the CSF field stack that contains orbital frontal gyrus and uh, gyrus rectus and meninges. The nasal cavity shows expansion and there is hypertrophy of the left inferior turbinate. This was a case of frontoethmodal meningoencephalosis. Usually it is congenital however it can be seen in adults due to trauma or iatrogenic cause. This was the case of 45 year old man presenting with sudden onset diplopia. Uh, MRI reveals due to hyperintense lesion with avid enhancement involving the spinoid bone and left half of the lesser wing with extending extension into the optic orbital apex and displacement of the left optic nerve. CT scan reveals permeative lysis and destruction of the spinoid and clivus bone epicentered in the spinoid fissure. So, this was a case of chondrosarcoma. Its counterpart chordoma can be differentiated as chordoma is midline, not off midline, and it involves the clivus bone. And chondrosarcoma usually has higher ADC values as compared to chordoma. Now, this is a known case of Rosa Dorfman disease, 27 year old man presenting with proptosis swelling in the orbit uh, with multiple pathogenic swelling. The MRI reveals obliteration of the maxillary sinus cavity with heterogeneous enhancement uh, in the mag uh, maxillary bone, spinoid, and ethmoid bone. CT scan shows uh, ground glass expansion of the medullary cavity with uh, cortical thinning. Now, uh, other ancillary findings this patient had were the choroid plexus papilloma, enlargement and T2, hydrogenous hyperintense of the lacrimal gland, and multiple uh, enlarged cervical lymph nodes in the CT scan. So, uh, the teaching point was that uh, in a known case of fibrous uh, rosei, rosei Dorfman disease, uh, if you see such bony lesion, it is associated with fibrous dysplasia. So, this is a case of 37 year old man presenting with facial deformity in one month duration. You can see the clinical picture MRI showing the T2 heterogeneously hyperintense lesion with lobulated margin involving the left half of the face, oronasopharynx with bilateral proptosis. The lesion shows patchy areas of enhancement with uh, diffusion restriction and areas of necrosis. On CT, there is a uh, lactic destruction of the spinoid bone, cribriform plate, pterygoid plate, and left orbit. A provisional diagnosis of sinonasal carcinoma was made. However, the histopathology proved to be adenoid cystic carcinoma. It is the second most common malignancy after mucor 
epidermoid carcinoma affecting the minor salivary gland. Lung metastasis is quite common, which was seen in this case. 40 year old woman presenting with insidious onset loss of vision on the left, MRI revealing T2 hyperintense lesion lobulated uh, involving the intra orbital segment of the uh, left optic nerve with heterogeneous enhancement showing diffusion restriction. This was the case of optic nerve glioma. Most of them are uh, pilocytic astrocytoma, WHO CNS grade 1. They are associated with NF type 1. However, in adults, it can be aggressive. Uh, this is a 16 year old boy presenting with multiple episodes of frank nasal bead uh, MRI showing T2 hyperintense lesion with uh, multiple provides giving salt and pepper appearance. On uh, post contrast sequence, there is avid enhancement, the lesion is represented in the left pterygopalatine fossa. This was a case, of course, a case of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, which is benign but locally aggressive vascular tumor, which is almost exclusively seen in MAP boys. Uh, now we have uh, three cases of schwannoma, a 61 year old woman presenting with tinnitus headache, MRI revealing a solid cystic lesion, the solid component showing heterogeneous enhancement, the lesion is causing expansion of the internal auditory canal. So this was a case of vestibular schwannoma, which is the most common intracranial and most common cerebrofontine cisternal mass associated with NF type 2. Schwannoma passes through the porous acousticus while meningioma doesn't, that's how we can differentiate if there is any lesion in the cerebrofontine angle. Now this is a case of 40 year old uh, woman presenting with tingling sensation in left half of the face, MRI revealing lobulated T2 hyperintense lesion in the left Michael scape showing heterogeneous enhancement causing mass effect in the form of uh, obliteration of the cystinal space and uh, displacement of the left hemipons and trigeminal nerve was not seen separately on the left while on the right it is seen so this was a case of trigeminal nerve schwannoma it is the second most common site uh, after vestibular cochlear nerve uh, for if there is a schwannoma and sensory nerve are the most commonly affected uh, as compared to pro pure mode cranial nerve in schwannoma while uh, olfactory nerves and optic nerves do not contain schwann cells these sensory nerves are never affected in uh, schwannoma now the, this is 30 year old man presenting with proptosis tosis and diminution of vision mri revealing a lobulated dumbbell shaped t2 hyperintense lesion with heterogeneous enhancement and uh, in the meckel cave uh, extending into the uh, orbit through orbital apex uh, this was a case of v1 division of trigeminal schwannoma so two third of the Meckel cave tumors are schwannoma. We have winking Meckel sign in which the normal Meckel cave is filled with CSF and appears bright. However, any lesion that fills this space uh, will cause uh, obliteration of this T2 hyperintensity and then contrast will be seen with the opposite bright side. Finally, last case, a 70 year old man presenting with type 1 diabetes, headache and left ear discharge. There was hyperintensity along the petrous bone, uh, loss of flow signal along the right ICA and T2 hyperintensity in the middle ear cavity. This was a case of skull based oyster malitis, which was a typical infection arising from the temporal bone and not from uh, sinusitis or uh, deep facial infection, which is atypical and usually involves the central skull base. So the take home message is that both CT and MRI are the imaging modality of choice for skull based pathology. We need to have a thorough knowledge of anatomy apart from knowing various imaging characteristic of any particular lesion and a role of radiologist is not just limited to diagnosing it but also to describe the relation with the important structure and its extent. Thank you so much.